Hello and welcome everybody to the latest edition of Planted on Earth. My name's Sam Peters, I'm one of the co-founders of Planted, the first contemporary design show aimed at reconnecting cities with nature. Um, Anna, we're here at Planted, it's great to see you and to actually meet you at last. We see you guys have been uh, Chalk and Moss, your, your brand, great supporters of Planted since we've been virtually uh, connected, but actually it's great to see you down here in front of the, the Planted living wall with biotechnology here. And, um, Good to have you have you on board and uh, just maybe why don't we start off just talking a little bit about chalk and moss what's the sort of origins of the business and the brand and uh, and uh, yeah what, what what is it that you're you're presenting yeah absolutely and can i just say likewise it feels like we've known each other for ages yes. but without ever actually meeting <laughs> yes. um so chalk and moss uh, i started that three years ago um quite shortly after having well all my life i've been going on and on about how important nature is for yeah. our well-being and then I came across biophilic design a number of years ago and it was like a light bulb moment and I thought this is what I've been talking about all these years and had no idea that there was a term for it mm -hmm. and suddenly everything just came together uh, I've always been interested in craft and so I have created uh, Chalk and Moss which is an online homeware shop um, where I sell Lifestyle, lifestyle and home products in mm -hmm. natural materials, natural colours, natural textures that are beneficial for our well-being. Mm -hmm. Because I thought all these things that I read about biophilic design, it is often too focused in my opinion on um, sort of office spaces and right. making sure that workers are happy, which is of course really, really important. Yeah. But what about as soon as you come home, it's yeah. really important for people to feel really good in their homes and in their spare time as well. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to bring this to ordinary people um, and the domestic, the domestic market where people can really feel safe and comfortable and creative and productive, all those things, good things in their homes. So I work closely with small brands and uh, the independent designer makers um, to sell their products here in the UK. Can you give us an idea, like a few of the products, perhaps you'll your best selling products mm -hmm. or just your personal favourites? Yeah, uh, so uh, one thing that definitely comes to mind is a foraging bag that actually we did a promotion together, yes, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, that one is so popular because it sort of combines people's interest in great design. Mm -hmm. uh, Brick, who, who makes these, she works closely with Bristol University to, um, with their um, department that, that works on advancing eco materials. Mm -hmm. Um, so not only is it, and that is, I should mention that as well, that obviously there's a, there's a big focus on sustainability um, and eco-credentials yeah. in, in everything that I sell. Um, so this foraging bag has great design and very, very good sustainable credentials, mm -hmm. but it's also a thing that encourages people to go outside and enjoy being outside all year round, um, picking whatever it is that grows at that time, whether it's wild garlic or, or um, raspberries or, or mm -hmm. whatever whatever is the season yeah um, so that's a really good seller um, I work very closely with the organic company which is a company from Denmark a small mm -hmm. independent company who do uh, kitchen bathroom and lifestyle products um, and they work in a way that everything is designed to be multi-functional so mm -hmm. for instance they do a really great series of kitchen and washcloths which can be either for the kitchen because they've got quite a good texture of the material so you can you know get really get in there and scrape yeah um, but also they're fantastic for, for face and body yeah. um, in the shower or in the bath so everything is designed to be to fit nicely together because the whole color range is really nice muted colors um, very soft colors but it's also designed to, to be long-lasting and to, to have lots of different purposes. And what, what's the, I mean, you, you mentioned that you always felt this connection to nature, but what, why? What, what, what's the sort of reason that's taken you to, to where you are today? Well, I, I come from Sweden originally, and when I was five, we moved to London, central London, and I literally felt like a, uh, a round item trying to squeeze into a square item. It just it just didn't work. City life for me, it and I didn't realise it at the time. I didn't realise what it was that was wrong um, for many, many years. And then when I was 18, I did my first winter season. Um, I'm a big snowboarder and skier. And I went to the mountains and lived there for six months. And it was, it was life-changing. It was like I just, <laughs> everything just opened up. Mm. And I felt like a completely different person. And it really sunk deep, that feeling of, how it how free and how just at peace I felt mm -hmm. when I wasn't confined in a city mm. um, and so ever since then I've just whatever I'm doing wherever I am I'm making such an effort to always 
be outside um, enough uh, and for my family as well to make sure that they spend enough time and they understand it as well in fact mm. my son who's now nine he will he will say to me I think I think we need to get I think we need to get outside mm. I think because he he sometimes can feel a little bit anxious and he knows when it's time to mm. to go outside mm. and I think just being in touch with that is mm. so so important mm. and it's something that I've, I've carried through now um, all these years yeah that's I mean that's it's such an important thing to people to also know what that feels like isn't it I guess if you've lived in a city all your life all you've known mm. is the city you don't have a lot of access to, to nature or to to green spaces yeah. as such you, you may not even know that that sense of connectivity has been lost yeah, um, absolutely so I guess that's part of what we're all trying to do as part of this planted project is to give people on any level um, some access to nature and yeah. some opportunity to, to access nature and it's really interesting hearing you talk about biophilic design because we had a light bulb moment as well I guess when we came across that and how how important is that sort of um, movement as such mm. been to, to informing you and chalk and moss indeed oh it literally informs absolutely everything I do it, it, it's in daily it's a daily anchor I'd mm. say um, you know the principle I've done a lot of research into biophilic design I, I studied um, interior design at KLC as well mm -hmm. um, and I was always influenced by by natural patterns and natural textures in the home so when we when we rebuilt our house that was something that was really, really key, um, was letting up in enough light. I, I lived in Montreal for a few years and, and there we had a very dark apartment and it it was unbelievable that how it impacted me and my husband um, it being in a dark space. So now everything is about having the right light coming in, um, having the right textures that feel natural. And so in my in my business, it's something that informs every decision. Um, you know, does this fit with with the biophilic design principles and looking at the key areas that are studied in biophilic design, you know, whether it be whether it be the colours or textures or water or landscape or, or safety mm -hmm. or views, all of those things are in the back of my mind mm -hmm. when I'm when I'm selecting designs for the shop, when I'm curating it, and I work very, very closely with the designers mm -hmm. that I represent, um, sort of looking at what influenced them and what was behind that, what, what's their stories. I'm, I'm always very, very interested in, in the stories behind the products. Have you seen um, the connection with your audience and the people that you sell to or to sell your products to? But ha I mean, have you seen that change like during the lockdown? And the, I mean, there's so much talk about how people are reconnecting yeah. with nature. And, and secondary to that, if, if you have seen that change, how would you say we need to continue that and make sure that becomes a long-standing rather than a short, short-term sort of uh, position for people. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, my my audience. I'm in a way I'm preaching to the converted mm. because the people that buy from my shop, there's a real crossover with people who love nature and love being outside, and people who care about the planet. So people often come to me because they're looking for zero waste shops, for instance. Mm -hmm. So people buying all-purpose bags or food bags that they can take to the to the shop um, rather than using plastic bags. So. I think that audience was already there, but you do see that people are buying more gifts for other people mm -hmm. because perhaps other people aren't thinking along those lines just yet. So through lockdown, I mean, through lockdown was actually a really, really successful mm -hmm. period for my shop um, because people were spending much more time in their homes mm -hmm. and valuing that little bit of time that they could get outside mm -hmm. each day, really thinking, how can I make the most of that? Mm -hmm. So people were buying things to, to help them enjoy that time yep. at, in their home and when they could go out. And then I also saw a further step from that, that people were buying, for instance, for their grandchildren, for their friends, buying things so that they could enjoy those same things. So I think people were starting to spread the message. And obviously there was a real, there was a real community feeling that started really developing through lockdown with people taking care of yep. their extended family and also their neighbours. In fact, I actually had people messaging me saying that they were buying buying things for people in the neighbourhood who they thought could, could use a little bit of a cheering up. Yep. So I think that I think that was... People would... Sorry, let me rephrase that. I think people are thinking along more sustainable lines, mm -hmm. not just for themselves, but for their wider community and for the planet. That mm. people really... It, it was a double-edged sword. There was a lot more plastic waste of course you know yeah yeah face masks there's apparently yeah. now you know in the rivers they're seeing more face masks than plastic bags mm -hmm. but i think on the flip side there's also a lot more people thinking 
more sustainably and thinking more long term how are we going to solve wider problems mm -hmm. not just the immediate problems and I mean maybe last couple for me in terms of like your your work in the future as well but I mean how, how do you see this movement evolving and, ch and, and continuing in terms of the biophilic design movement I mean what, what's what's your role in all this what's Chalk and Moss's role in yeah. all this well from what I hear, I mean, I did my own research, of course, as well, but a, a lot of the press that I was in touch with in the early days, um, uh, they they kind of coined me as the first biophilic design shop um, okay. in the UK, nice. um, which was really nice. So El Decor picked me as one of the, their top um, uh, top home decor shops uh, of the year uh, when, I, when I launched. Um, I think the biophilic design has since, since I launched three years ago, it has just exploded mm. and I don't think that can possibly be something that will go away you know it's not like it's not like a passing fad that's no. like saying uh, sustainability is a passing fad if yeah. it can't be we, we will not survive if we don't continue on this path yeah and I think biophilic design is so intrinsically linked with that that I think more and more people will start and, and from lockdown as well that mm. more and more people will start thinking about self-care and thinking about how to take responsibility for themselves. Mm -hmm. I think I think lockdown is it was really a time of thinking, okay, I need to I need to make sure that I'm okay because mm -hmm. I can't always rely on that everything around me is going to be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I hope that that will mean that maybe people people might not know that it's called biophilic design. Yes, yeah. And that doesn't matter. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. But as long as they're thinking along the lines of biophilic design and what it what it means to them, I think that is a sustainable approach. And I guess part of that being that sense of community, which again, I guess is part of the disconnect with nature as well, but perhaps we've come back more to our communities and the people who live really right on our doorstep as well as part of that support network. And, yeah, um, yeah. And, yeah. And I hope that, you know, you, are, you asked where, what, um, what, what, what Chocomos has, you know, what role Chocomos mm. plays in that. I think I, I ran the blog before I started the shop, um, talking about biophilic design, talking about self-care and, and uh, well-being through nature. And I think I'll, you know, I'll just carry on spreading that word. Mm. You know, whether people buy from me, it, it, that's, that's something separate because the blog was always a blog in its own, in its own right. Mm -hmm. I just want to really get people to understand how, how important it can be um, to have that, that clarity and that, that kind of space to, to think and to breathe. So I hope that, you know, I, I invite people to contact me if they've got any questions or if they, you know, want to learn more about biophilic design, um, then I'm always, I'm always here to kind of talk about something that I'm very passionate about. <laughs> and that passion comes through and it's, uh, it's evident in, in everything you do. So yeah. it's, as I say, it's been great to have you on, great to have you on, on Planted on Earth and great to, to see you in the flesh, so to speak. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, and um, yeah, thanks again for all, all the support you've given us and, and uh, hopefully we can continue to do both ways uh, as we go forward in the future. I'm very, very excited about this event. It was uh, <laughs> When I heard about it, I jumped out of my seats because I was so pleased that this is finally happening and it, it felt like there was a real connect between, between our two missions, really. Yeah, without a doubt. So, yeah, uh, yeah well, Anna from Chalk and Moss, it's great to have you and, um, yeah, good luck with everything you continue to do. Thank you, and you. <laughs>